Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, according according to this button that I just pressed, we are live. Jab. Apparently, I I am alive. <laughs> I am thankful to be alive. Um, and uh, I'm thankful that okay. you're live with me on this uh, stream. Jab. Thank you. Um, nice. Right. I, I was I was really appreciating uh, your course earlier today, uh, where you were educating me about how uh, they're going to turn the frogs gay, and uh, Alex Jones, yeah. and uh, being interviewed by Ben Shapiro, for example. I, yeah, it's very uh, very educational, for sure. Oh, he's most obviously and INFP. So Facts we've got some votes. Fact, oh. Wait, wait. Athens facts don't care about your feelings. Yes, I'm so happy someone said that. Yes, that's awesome. Wow. ISTJ. Ooh, we got a nice I really TJ. Need to, I really need to change the uh, the lettering on the uh, YouTube chat on the stream because those letters are so hard to read. I can't. I, I can't even read that. In fact, I haven't been able to read it since like the first time we even started streaming this new format with the GoPro. Like, so like <laughs> oh, I see people typing in there. Oh, yay, people are talking to me. Except, like, I don't even, oh. can't even read e a single name. E and TJ, e huh? E and TP. Ooh. Ooh, it's getting, it's getting Ooh. a little good in there. It's getting good. Uh, what's my vote, Jab? Uh, what is my vote? Oh, man, I don't know. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I, when I first thought of him, I'm like, oh, that guy's an ENTP, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, like, I started listening to a few of his things every now and then. I'm like, wow, is he an STJ? It's just, like, it's so weird. Yeah. I'm not sure, you know? So. He seems very TI heavy, so I would go it's probably NTP, STJ, somewhere around there. Yeah. All right. We'll see. He talks fast. There's got to be movement. Oh! Well, that, well, that's mildly inappropriate. Yeah, maybe. So, anyway, format time, folks. Format time. All right, so right. here's where we go about doing this. We choose some random dude. And I mean, like, it's really random. Except for the fact that like, we're trying to avoid Jordan Peterson because he's an obvious INTP, and I'm not trying to, like, bore people with, like, INTP. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, be that as it may, Ben Shapiro just ended up showing up because he was one of the most requested. And, like, I know Jordan Peterson is, like, the most requested, but I just don't like – I mean, I'm, like, so bored of Jordan Peterson right now. I can only troll him so much on Twitter. Uh, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, so we look at cognitive access. Uh, why do we do cognitive access? Let's explain the format just a little bit for people. So what is cognitive access? We're going to be talking about it at length in season 17 and 18, but cognitive access is where we take things that people say and identify specific cognitive function sets to go together. Now there's also cognitive orbit, but it doesn't work like that. So, but we're going to get into cognitive orbit later, but, uh, for, for just, you know, simple using the type grid, uh, that's what we do. If you don't know where to get the type grid, you can get it uh, on our Discord server. Just go to any channel in the Discord where like the bot is, and then just do the command exclamation point type grid one word, and then boom, it will like show up and appear magically in front of your face. It's like the dopest. And then uh, you oh. can also or oh oh, are you gonna finish my oh. sentence for me, Jab? Day dot live, see Joseph dot live, and there's a smaller one there, but you can see everything perfectly well. That's true, except for, like, reading the fine print. Now, unless you actually do our call to action so that you can satisfy Jab's coin slot, that means, like, you know, putting your email in there, then it'll take you to the page that you could download the type grid from. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can get it from, like, the Discord server. If you're on the Discord server, so you, don't have to, so you can follow along with us as we do this. Uh, also, so oh, on a side note, we promise to not sell any of your emails to Nigerian princes. Yes. So you've got that going for you. Yeah, yeah, that's that that's very excellent, Jab. Uh, we uh, we yeah, like a I fair can. and equitable uh, email campaign practices. Uh, so it's yeah. so good. Our email campaigns are so amazing here at CSJ that we've never sent one. <laughs> we've never sent a <laughs> we have never sent a single one, and it's like, and then of course I could just remember Ty Lopez being like, "Hey guys, the emails are." The lifeblood of your company. They are the lifeblood of your marketing system is your emails. Never forget that, guys. 
So, you know, I mean, but apparently we're ignoring that here for some reason. Uh, we're going to get that fixed, which, by the way, speaking of which, when we do send out emails, you might want to not ignore them because they're going to have like lectures inside of them that you don't like get access to on the reg. So you might actually Bye. benefit from opening our emails. And I know that we haven't done that yet, but the cognitive transitions lectures are coming specifically for the email campaigns. And if you're not a patron on Patreon, that's the only way to get those suckers. And they're going to be great. Uh, I'm going to be working on them very soon. Probably, I think, like before the month ends, the first one's going to be out. Uh, so, awesome. All right. So, yeah, cognitive axes, uh, we identify sentences. We can identify cognitive functions. So, uh, SENI sentences are like, um, I want to give you this experience, or this person was doing this. They're talking about some, something else that someone has done, or something that they're doing, et cetera, actively doing. It's something they're doing right now, or something someone has done in the past. That's not SI like everyone thinks it is, which is like so annoying. No, SI is different. SI is when they're talking about their past and things that they have experienced themselves, right? So their sentences come out that way. So SI and E is like, uh, I've done this thing before, so that means you're gonna wanna do it, right? Or why do you wanna do that? I had a really bad experience about that. That's SI plus E and E types of sentences, right? So that's why it gets tech mark next to it. And then we have TE plus FI, okay? And TEFI is like, I don't feel really good about your idea. You know, like that's that's like literally what that is, you know. So or it's um, or I feel really great about that idea or oh you're so smart. That's a T A E F I statement. Like and then there's a uh, F E T I which is um wow, those people like really like your idea or um wow, uh you really like my idea or I think this and I don't I don't know if that's a good thing. Like I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know TI if that's a good thing FE, right? Mm -hmm. Because the good thing in that context is the collective good, the ethic. It's not a moral basically. So that's cognitive right. axis. And then we have uh, quadras, which are STP plus NFJ quadra, STJ plus NFP quadra, SFJ, NTP quadra, SFP, or uh, SFJ plus NTP quadra, excuse me, and SFP plus NTJ quadra. And each of these all have the same four cognitive functions in their ego, except, uh, so that's why they're like the same. So once we identify cognitive axes, we can identify their quadras, and we instantly have a really good idea of ballpark where they are on the grid. It could actually eliminate 12 types just using that method. Pretty dope. And then otherwise, the traditional interaction styles versus temperaments, which, which we have been using, and that's already available in the type grid. Don't worry, we're going to have this stuff available for you after or during season 17, which is the dopest. So, But yeah, that's our format. Otherwise, if you haven't done so already, put, put in your vote right now for who Ben Shapiro is. I don't actually technically know. I'm kind of going to go with ENTP right now uh, or ESTJ. That's my vote. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, otherwise... Uh, Go ahead and uh, let us know if you haven't already. So, right. Aaron Lee says, I like the guy ESTJ. Said, Ragamuffin, my mom's an INFJ. Thank you, Ragamuffin, for informing us of that. <laughs> I like the guy who said he's 100% ENTJ. Now, I would like ENTJ. to know if he's okay. concrete or yeah. abstract. <laughs> yeah, concrete or abstract. All right, Jab, so enough talking. Let's, uh, let's get the show on the road. Let's fire it up. So uh, what you got for us? Alrighty, now I'm going to go back to an old one, so I think that, the, I haven't listened to this myself, but I think there's a good chance we'll be able to determine affiliative versus pragmatic from this. This is when he resigned from Breitbart over Michelle Fields being allegedly pushed by uh, Corey Lewandowski, so this is him speaking on Fox News, so we'll be able to hopefully determine affiliative versus pragmatic yet. Pragmatic yet. Okay, so... All right. Prehistoric Tuna yep. asked a question though. When will the test be released? The test will be a release when we're uh, when we actually like have money to afford uh, building it. So as our Patreon is increasing right now, uh, we are actually getting uh, enough of the monthly funds to begin at development on the test. And the test is going to be a mobile application and also a web app that you can log into so mm -hmm. that you could use it to test yourself and other people that you know, and then like share information about all of that and actually learn things like cognitive functions and cognitive axes and quadras and all this stuff, all in one really awesome tool. So if you want to get that, I highly recommend you guys become patrons because when you become patients, then we get the money to pay for the development to give you the app. And uh, it's going to be the dopest, let me tell you. So I'm pretty excited about it. So just wanted to get that, uh, you know, uh, hashtag 
Ben Shapiro sellout uh, segment there, Jab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't have any conservative mattresses sponsoring us. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No conservative mattress sponsors. No, not none today. No, no, no. And we don't have a wife who's a doctor, so we kind of sit. No, no wives that are doctors here. No wives at all. Nope, nope. No. Nope. Especially, especially <laughs> ones that are incapable of driving, and uh, and and, need a, <laughs> and and rely one hundred percent on Uber, and and that apparently that like that 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 increases her status for some reason. I, I have no idea, uh-huh. like like no clue at all. So, but yeah, all right, fire it up this time. I promise. All right. Kelly file exclusive: former Breitbart reporter Michelle Field. And Ben Shapiro, the now former Breitbart editor at large. He's also the current editor in chief of DailyWire.com. Great to see you both. So, Michelle, let me start with you. Why? Why did you resign? Well, I realized that my company uh, didn't have my editor. I never got the. So, you know, when people like got more access, and that they had a conversation and produced an email where Corey Lewandowski says to turn up just slightly. And we need to hurry before the audience starts demanding we type Ben Shapiro's sister in the same stream, which we might do for laughs. <laughs> yes, I think that'd be funny. And her oath. And why did you resign? I resigned because the, the fact is that Breitbart has unfortunately become a, a, a Trump Pravda site. And the, the Pravda me, site. You wow. as any news organization media organization once your loyalty to a political campaign trumps your loyalty to your own reporters i'm out that's that, that's not something i can back that's not something anybody decent should back oh uh, anybody decent by. should back that's affiliative where's my red pen where is it where is it there it is into an organization that actually promotes bullies in order to get close contact with promotes the campaign. bodies yeah, Pro- so oh, affiliative man. holy smokes you'll see to, to trump People call it Trump. Art. Well, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, the, the fact is that I think any objective observer of Trump, uh, of, of Breitbart News, could see for months that, that Breitbart had become uh, a very, very strong advocate for Donald Trump. And look, that's their that's their prerogative. Any any media organization has the ability to set editorial. The problem for me became absolutely clear when they decided to abandon their own reporter and indeed undercut their own reporter on Friday. They attempted to run a story, a very poorly evident story, in which they suggested that not only. Had Michelle basically botched the story, but so had Ben Terrace over at the Washington Post by misidentifying Lewandowski as a Secret Service agent. They did this on Breitbart. This is the site that Michelle reports for. Once your loyalty again outweighs reference points, your lo- tons of reference loyalty. points. Yeah, that's something Andrew Breitbart mm-hmm. never would have stood for. If, if Andrew Breitbart were alive today, Andrew Breitbart would have been down in Florida getting in Corey very Lewandowski's movement. face, very movement, and mm-hmm. or Corey Lewandowski grabbing and bruising Michelle. But, but Michelle, when you, you know, when this videotape came out to, today or yesterday, um, said, let's okay, get past what she says. Before, their spokesperson, but it was it came, and now we've seen that's true. There, then they said there were no, no reporters who witnessed it. And that's not, well, those who suggested that you've been pushed down to the ground, you know, in, in one report, they said that, that that's obviously not true either. Ben, I want to ask you about the smear because boy, Corey Lewandowski, who, um, you know, it may be known to our viewers has issued threats before. Um, uh, Came you. after yeah. her and <laughs> and tried to. I mean, they're they're basically trying to destroy her Michelle's reputation, saying that she's an attention okay. seeker, that she tries to make herself the story, that she fabricates things. That's the implication. Yes, yes. Stop uh, talking, woman, and let the man speak. He needs to yeah. speak. <laughs> We're trying to type him. Please. It is a sexist smear. I mean, the fact that, that Corey Lewandowski was putting out that's a from discredited website yep. that he was accusing Michelle of being an attention seeker who had done this sort of thing in the past in order to gain attention for herself. And all that Corey Lewandowski Attention had to for do herself, was to stop T-E, the T-E-F-I statement. To do it. That's, that's basically all that would have stopped this. Instead, he decided to lie and to smear, and Breitbart decided to, to go right along with that. So why you know, is this a story? Where... I mean, in, ben, in your view, Ben, mm-hmm. apart from, you know, the implosion of Breitbart, and, and it's, it's part of the civil war that we're seeing in some, you know, from some on the right, why is this a story? Well, I mean, I think the idolatrous worship of the Trump campaign by some people in the media leading to them covering up the truth is is a major story and as you say i think it's it's, it's again a story because Covering the trump the campaign never acknowledges mistakes never acknowledges their responsibility for violence never acknowledges anything that they do wrong it's a no apologies campaign that's why he's popular but that does have consequences and it does have victims you know in this case oh, it was man. just a bruiser seems systematic you know, they're, they're 
better for it. He's just talking in systems consistently about how information flows uh, within the media. I mean, you can learn uh, for the audience. Like, uh, if you haven't read "Trust Me, I'm Lying" by uh, Ryan Holiday, that book is exquisite, and it kind of explains the information flow systems uh, where you can basically manipulate bloggers to create fake stories, uh, and that's basically how fake news is uh, produced to generate a lot of buzz <laughs> over like nothing. It's like literally much ado about nothing, and that's exactly what Mr. Shapiro here is actually talking about. Um, and then he's talking about the system, about how that works. And I don't know, um, kind of seems, kind of seems a little N E so far jab. I haven't seen much N I S E first. What do you think on that from a perception? Well, side? that's the whole thing about him though. He's all about the futures of other people. He's not about his yeah. future. Yeah. Like even when he's talking about his wife, it's like, oh, she's a doctor. She's great. She's amazing. She's going places. Like you yeah. never hear about like that that T E that T E status thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like that right. uh, that like ooh I I'm T E and I have to I have to tell everyone that that my wife's a doctor because because of status. You know, like guys, I yeah. I, I really care about my status because like I'm a T E user obviously, and so I'm just gonna tell everyone over and over and over again that like my wife's a doctor. You know that 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 goes to work at Uber. You know, like okay okay Mr. Shapiro okay. All right, someone needs to yeah, hug that man. man. Please, please hug that man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, well, dang. Well, let's keep at it. Let's I think we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I should be the one keeping you on track. You're keeping me on track. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? A nightline clip. Here we go. A nightline. I mean, I mean, like, do I look like a physical threat to anybody? Do I seem like a physical threat to anybody? The last time I was in a fight, I was 14 years old. I was two years younger than everybody else in the high school class. Ben okay. Shapiro is editor in chief of the conservative Daily Wire and host of a popular political podcast. He's now at the center. Berkeley Brett played down for you. And the headlines were nuts. I mean, the headlines. The like, headlines were Brett. nuts. That's a TE statement. Headlines were nuts. Just three hours before possible. Awesome. I'm hearing some rumors that there may be some people who try to bring weapons tonight, which would just be ridiculous and awful. I want to be getting killed at my election. Rumors, that's SI plus NE e again. Mm -hmm. Undercover people about Lawrence who is this is says this all speaks to a liberal hysteria on American campuses. So your view is this is political correctness, Ron Numak? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's the furthest extension of political correctness. <laughs> and when you say something, that it's not just me disagreeing with you it is me destroying your identity as a human being in a way that is akin to violence let me just read you from <laughs> the statement that the folks who want to cut you down put out they say ben shapiro has openly called transgender people mentally ill portrays the great gay rights movement as a conspiracy to root out god-based institutions he has recently defended conversion therapy with his, which is nothing short of it Okay, so there are a bunch of things that are just not true there. I am unaware of any time that I have ever defended conversion therapy as such, said that it's effective, because I don't see the evidence that it's that's, effective. What that's about S I N E, that's T E F I. Yeah. Like I think it's obvious now. We know for a fact he's um, in the S T J N F P quadra. So, right. Yep. Definitely got his quadra nailed. So S T J S T J N F P quadra. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So all you uh, all you ENTJ uh, people out there for uh, Mr. Benji Sapiro, uh, yeah, no, no, not at all, because he's like yeah, I thought I thought it was absurd when the first person to suggest said he was an INFP. I guess maybe that's not so absurd after all. Yeah, and given that like we we see him being affiliative so far, STJ plus NFP. Guess what? STJs and NFPs are both affiliative, so it doesn't matter anyway. You see what I'm saying? So temperament wise, we're going to yeah. have to uh, we're going to have to look at this systematic interest or abstract versus concrete. And so far, huh. he's had a little abstract in one statement earlier, but then I've noticed like three concrete statements. So let's let's kind of take a look at more at abstract versus concrete, systematic and interest, and see where we can go from there. Right, 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 right who suffer from psychological disorders. You are not doing a service to people who are suffering from a mental disorder to humor them by suggesting that their mental disorder is reflected in objective reality. It is. Isn't that oh. more of a pragmatic approach right there? Mm, no, because he's being super rational and he's talking about how people could be misdiagnosed. It's all about doing the right thing. He's talking about doing the right thing. It's not being independent with what he's saying. 
He's uh, rare. He's conveying a regular opinion. Go back and play it again. Let's let's listen to it again. All right. Um, humor them by disorders. You are not due to logical disorder. So I, I do say that transgenderism is a mental illness because it's gender dysphoria, it's a psychological disorder. So that's not an insult to people who suffer from psychological disorders. You are not doing a service to people who are suffering. Yeah, you're not mental. doing a service to people. That's affiliative. Yeah. So. Right. So the fact that you should be doing a service to them makes it affiliative. However, for it to yeah. be pragmatic, and he's like, forcing so. and he's forcing people saying you should do this. So that's like a low se. It's like a, an se critic or a, or a um, um, it could be a se critic. It could be actually any of the lower lower se's. Quite frankly, with that kind of behavior, but it seems. It seems very SE critic, very, um, or maybe even SE nemesis too, uh, from there, because he's, he's like speaking out of his conviction when he says it. So he's like a high SI user, uh, for sure. Right. But he could like, so it is okay. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not thinking he's an ENFP. I'm, I'm kind of not, uh, but the others, I mean, the others are definitely still on the table for me. So, uh, we can, we could definitely get in there. Uh, it yeah. seems the difference moving, between Alex and day is night and day. <laughs> yeah for sure definitely movement though like super movement and if that's the case you know then okay that makes it a little bit easier but i want to verify all that first so let's keep going all right reflected in objective reality it is important to note that the american psychological association does not define being blind uh, and they're committing suicide because they are depressed because people are mistreating. Then I'm not for mistreatment, but I don't think that me suggesting that you're not a woman is mistreatment of you. Whether or not you agree with Shapiro, whether or not you think the men, the men is a leader of, he's also hated, but is, uh, is garbage described alt-right. I've been very, very outspoken against the alt-right. I've said the alt-right is, uh, is a garbage movement. Very direct. Garbage idea. It has nothing to do with constitutional conservatism. Shapiro is also labels, fiercely- Labels, T-E labels. Mm-hmm. And he publicly quit his last job at Breitbart News. Not seeing TE comment. child or TE right. inferior at all based on that. This would be too low. He's got right. really high TE, so he's definitely like an SJ for sure. Definitely an SJ. Right. As near as I could tell. Got the direct going, but the control versus movement is still kind of subjective right now. I need more evidence there. And I want more evidence of initiating and responding. And then like, uh, and obviously the rest of the temperaments too. So let's keep going. Right. Trump campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. And Shapiro thought Breitbart failed to have her back. And I quit under uh, very public circumstances. Uh, because very Breitbart public did circumstances. Propaganda arm and the alt-right really liked President Trump or the then-candidate Trump. What kind of blowback have you received? Well, I mean, aside from the 7,400-odd anti-Semitic tweets that I received from March to November of last year, uh, you know, death threats in the mail, death threats on uh, my phone, death threats at my business phone. Which is why Shapiro finds it hard to believe that Protesters call him a white supremacist. The stupidest thing I have legitimately ever heard. I keep hearing this, and I, I keep. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That's like a pessimistic T. Yeah, it is a pessimistic T. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He just comes off. He comes off so extroverted, but I think he's like cognitive transition, maybe into a subconscious for that. Like it's a good chance. It's a good chance of that. So. Oh. Let's do a different clip was... out, outside of Dateline. Let's right. see what you got. All right, all right, all right. So let's see what I got here. Joe Rogan and I got him on the Ruben Report. What? Wait, wait, let's go with the Ruben Report. It's a bit more casual, a bit more eager-based. Your sound's going out, bro. And if the narrative is more important than facts on your side. Sorry, my ping just shot through the roof for some reason. Oh, went up to well, 2000. that's what happens when you're on Wallaby Internet. You know, it would have been nice if they actually installed Fios at your house for once. I mean, oh, wait, didn't you see them installing it recently? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be ready sometime in the next, like, four months or something. Like, I don't understand how it takes so long to lay down some cable. You know, cable. Wave Broadband once told that to me. And they said, oh, yeah, it'll be ready in, in six months. And, of course, it's been, like, 12 years. So... <laughs> all right well let's keep playing yeah. and so we'll just hunker down in our respective identity politics bunkers and snipe at each other yeah and get very angry over over without any common basis of facts because i mean this is why i focus so much on facts and listen i'm not going to pretend that every opinion i have is a fact but when there's a fact i try to distinguish it from my opinion i'll try to give you the fact and then say and now here's my opinion on the fact 
once we got away from the common basis effect, it's very difficult to have a conversation at all. And that's why I think people are always surprised when I speak on campus. And then when I speak with people who I disagree with on politics all the time, and we can have a nice cordial conversation so long as we agree what's a fact and what's, what's an opinion. But, yeah, but yeah. that's getting harder, right? I mean, even yeah. just getting people to agree on the set of facts is becoming virtually impossible. Well, people are offended so much by the fact that they feel like a fact is, is offensive to who I am as a human being. It is yeah. the one that I've run into the most, obviously, yeah, is, is yeah, whenever yeah. I say, if I say that I think that, you know, poverty is largely caused by human behavior as opposed to by identity, then people yeah. take that as though I'm casting. That's responding. Against- That's responding. And it's really hard for him because you can tell he's darting back and forth between his, um, his, his ego and his subconscious consistently, right? Because... Right. Like he's darting back and forth because he's controlling the conversation. You know, it's like, oh, hey, uh, oh, I'm going to respond, but I'm going to respond by, by uh, you know, and then he comes off really initiating, but he's still responding to the same idea. He's not actually introducing any new ideas or, or any new approaches at all, like not even remotely introducing. So right. I, I, I've been trying to listen to him initiating something new in the conversation, but then the interviewer just straight up asks him like a completely different idea you know, and then he sticks with that new idea. He sticks in the context uh, con- consistently. He's not going outside of the context by initiating outside of it. But I want to. I want to get more evidence on that. Um, let's keep going. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I go on campus and I say that, according to the Brookings Institute, right, just get married before you have babies, hold a job, graduate high school, and you won't be permanently poor in the United States, people get offended because they say, "Well, but I'm poor." That's concrete. And I didn't fulfill maybe one of those rules, but I'm still a good person, so why, why would you say something like that? So it, it's, it's much easier, I think, to be offended than to take responsibility for your own. Yeah, that is absolutely very concrete, because there's very too many concrete. variables in yep. that equate yep. to be so definitive. Like, so... I definitely would agree with the notion that, like, maybe following that advice would make you less likely of being poor. However, I don't yeah. think it's a definitive solution to how to not be poor. Yeah, so temperament-wise... He's definitely an SJ. So, so right now it's between ESTJ and ISTJ, and uh, honestly, given how we know he's movement, uh, all evidence is really pointing to him being an ISTJ. Quite honestly, which would be really great because I was right. not expecting this. But let's uh, let's let's do a little bit more. See if we can get some more initiating versus responding evidence before we call it a night on this one, and then like potentially see if I can uh, right. convince you to do Ben Shapiro's sister as well in the same stream. <laughs> oh god <laughs> all right what actions and that has unfortunately i think fallen on all sides too where do you think the conservatives then drop the ball on this like the fact that so many people are turning to you right now mm-hmm. and I, I think i messaged you uh my husband was at home depot and there was a guy working there who <laughs> was uh you know a, a stock guy mexican stock mm-hmm. guy and he was blasting Ben Shapiro show on his, that's on really his funny. iPhone. And every, yeah, like, that's you know, very blasting, responding. Just blasting it. And it's like, <laughs> he's like, like oh, I'm too you want me Shapiro. and you want to talk to me and I'm having such a great experience. And, but there's some things that you need to know, man. There's just some things you need to know about me because of my status. But then like, I'm so happy because you're, you want to talk to me. I feel so de- desired right now. And I'm having a really good experience. I, I, I really love my job. And oh, by the way, my wife's a doctor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> 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 ENFP subconscious, <laughs> man. Well, something happened obviously to conservatives that they got completely tuned out. And then you sort of have led this, I think, resurgence of this. You know? I mean, I, I think that... Is there, a point, is there a fault guy on that? You think? Um, I, I mean, in, in terms of fault, I think that conservatives have never spoken well in terms of morality, in terms of, uh, with, with regard to politics. Uh, they've always spoken in terms of statistics and data, and they do the Paul Ryan accountant routine. And so when people think of conservatives, they think of one of two things. They think of Paul Ryan with an accounting briefcase, or they think yeah. of you know, Pat Buchanan or maybe Donald Trump saying something that they find offensive. Mm-hmm. And those are the ways that people identify with conservatism or identify yeah, what conservatives correct. are. And what I've tried to do is say that there is a moral tenor to the facts. Here's my moral narrative. Oh, yeah. Here are the facts. That moral, that huh. FI, FI optimist. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, folks. Well, final thing. Ben Shapiro is called ISTJ. And my horrible uh, right-hand writing, because I'm left-hand for writing, is uh, terrible. Please ignore that. But yes, final call. Ben Shapiro is definitely an ISTJ. Excellent on this one, Jab. I, uh, I'm very happy that uh, we finally got an ISTJ. Wow, have we actually <laughs> done like one of each type 
so far in rapid I, succession and we just got lucky? I think I think um Or do we double up somewhere? I think remember. we're missing an ENFJ and an ENFJ. ESTJ. What are we we're missing an ESTJ yeah. and a what? And an ENFJ. Did we do an ENFJ? No, Neil deGrasse Tyson, man. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, too. Yeah. So I think Okay. Just ESTJ and ISFJ at this point is the only ones that we're missing. So then we could have the whole set completed, you know? Um, and then maybe we could do Jordan Peterson. Yeah, maybe we could do Jordan Peterson. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> so, you know what? Let's uh, let's have some fun, though. Let's uh, let's let's do uh, get throw up some You're clips of uh, Ben Shapiro's sister. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, let's see. Here. All right. I don't even know her name. So Ben Shapiro's I, sister. Yeah, Ben Shapiro's sister. <laughs> And I don't know why, but like the YouTube drop down is saying Ben Shapiro sister the milk. Oh my gosh! Wow. No. Jordan Shapiro is that is that her name? Jordan Shapiro. No, Abigail Shapiro. Oh, Abigail. Shapiro. Abigail Shapiro. Okay, got it. All right. Just no singing. Uh, no singing. No singing. She only do singing, but let's see. Let's see what I can find of her. Abigail Shapiro. <laughs> oh, God, no, this is terrible. Well, Domesday's right. like, watch the sister be one of the types we're missing. Um, nice. Combing through anti Semitic videos and singing videos. Um, she seems to be mostly a singer. Is there an interview? I'm gonna start googling myself in a second. Let's see if we can get. Yeah. All right. Interview with Abigail Spiro. Let's see. You know what? Let's ask the audience for some help because I'm pretty sure that would make it so much easier. Does anyone have yeah. a video? Alright. Somebody linked a YouTube video. Uh, oh wait. Let's shut up the sound just in case. She played Cindy Lou Who in how the Grinch stole Christmas touring production. So well, I guess that's what happens when you do something unplanned and off the cuff. It's shooting from the hip. Oh, well. Yeah, like, she's not as much of a public figure. There's no interviews of her. There's only a little bit of her singing, but I don't think you're going to have a very accurate typing of trying to type All right, her. all right. Well, how about we just do uh How about we just wildcard it, then? Ask the audience what they want. Let's see it. Let's all right. Wildcard mode. Let's do this. All right, audience, tell us. Who do you want us to type just randomly right now? Boom. You know, right now. Let's Let's do it. Let's see. <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Jordan Peterson. Nice. nice. Milo Yanopokis. Jordan I'm pretty Peterson. sure that's not how you spell his name, but okay. George Lincoln Walkwell. All right, all right, all right. Let's do Jordan Peterson then. Let's do it. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> you know what you should do? Interview, like, but not a lecture. <laughs> Cut out the Jordan Peterson section and then put it on the Patreon later. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the chat's going crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Jordan Peterson is Christmas. Fire it up, man. Fire all right, it up. All right, all right. Let's see what I can find. You want to do the Kathy Newman interview? Yes, I do want to do the Kathy Newman interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Jordan Peterson, you said that men need to Can you hear that? The hell Turn it up a little more. Well, because there's nothing uglier than an old infant. There's nothing good about people who don't grow up, don't 
find the sort of meaning in their life that sustains Nothing them. good about when people grow up. Green for JP, man. All right, TIFE on that yeah. statement. And then drift and just, just a statement. Look how controlled his speech is. And arrogant He's so and control. And yep. Have no use Compared to Ben Shapiro. No to yeah, he got you, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. so moved, man, because my, my, my wife's a doctor, you know. But I'm Jordan what? Peterson, and I take my time. What do you do about it? You tell, you help people understand why it's necessary <laughs> and important to grow up and you, adopt you want to help people life. it's necessary and important and 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 you've got to help them fe t-i-f-e why it's more like uh, a delineation of the kind of destiny that makes life worth living destiny and e it's abstract <laughs> destiny <laughs> abstract <laughs> destiny it is the audience is a male well it's about 80 percent on on youtube which is a YouTube is a male domain primarily, so it's hard to tell how much of it is because YouTube is male and how, how much of it is because of what I'm saying. But um, very TI, it is a male what domain. I'm telling them is that there's an actual reason why they need to grow up, which is that they have something to offer, you know, that, that, that people have within them this capacity to set the world straight. -I -F -E. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and also doing so is where you find the meaning that sustains you. And the God. meaning that sustains you. The meaning that sustains oh, you. Uh, Abstract. Mm -hmm. I, I think that systematic. I, young men are hear words of encouragement. Some some of them never in their entire lives, as far as I can tell. We, That's what they we, tell. we need to give them words of encouragement because I'm an FE user. I'm an obvious uh, FE user. I need to make them feel better about themselves. Young men are starving for this sort of message because, like, why in the world would they have to derive it from a lecture on YouTube? No, they're so not responding. being taught. But it's important to develop yourself. It's, does it does it bother you that your audience is predominantly male? Does that isn't isn't that a bit divisive? No, I don't a bit think so. Divisive. Right? Divisive than the fact that YouTube is primarily male and Tumblr is primarily well, that's pretty women, divisive, female, isn't Tumblr, it? Tumblr is primarily female. But you're just saying that's the way it is. No, I'm not yeah, saying that's anything. the way it is because I'm pragmatic AF. <laughs> Let me use my TI to beat you over the head. Yes, please be over the head more. Thank you. Uh, it's what's in it for the women, though? What's in it? She's so interest based, and he's just like, I don't care. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I'm going to help you. So you're you on. Look at this. Have pragmatic. Pragmatic. Well, what's what kind of man do you want? Child? What do, do you want? want you, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. Andy, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? It depends on what they want. Depends Look on at what this. They want. <laughs> it's pragmatic, and it's like, he oh, is hey, an SFJ NTP. He is an SFJ NTP, guys. Yeah, see? SFJ NTP. Men are suffering, therefore it's going to hurt women if we don't fix this problem. That's what's in it for women, and it's not something to hurt women. Preach it, like, yeah. Preach pragmatic, it. Pragmatic AF. Pragmatic AF. And he's like, no, speaking. that's a system. That's systematic, too. Oh, it's like women want deeply. Women want, want deeply. Who are confident and powerful. People who are confident men, and powerful. We need we need to lift up men to give women what they want because it's pragmatic because when they have their families the men need to be better for them to be happy they need to be better for them to be happy amen women don't you, want you, to be are you, gonna, are you gonna pass the plate jab are you gonna pass the plate on this one <laughs> <laughs> preach it yeah did any super chats come in when i wasn't looking i don't think we're that cool tonight yeah Oh, well, hopefully we get some Patreon there. We build, we can build a mobile app. Yep, mobile app. We don't mean power in in the in the in the in that they can. He's trying so hard to craft his words. He's focused on the outcome. What he's saying is control. Corruption. Power is competence. Responding. Why in the world would you not want a competent partner? Well, I I know <laughs> why. Don't you want a competent partner? So you're if you want domination, want to dominate is that what you're saying? No, I'd say women who have had their relationships impaired with impaired their relationships with men 
impaired and who are afraid of such relationships will settle for a weak partner because they can dominate them. But it's a suboptimal solution. Do you think that's no what a lot of women good. are doing? It's a suboptimal solution. That's TI. Yeah. Women and that's also pragmatic. Like, this yeah. doesn't work. Therefore, it's not good. No, it's a, suboptimal. It yeah. Work. Well, that's, that's also a systematic statement, too. Right. And yeah, I guess I guess I guess I could argue pragmatic for that one. Very unhappy. It's very bad for their partners. They're very Although, unhappy, very effy. Yeah. It's bad for their partners. It doesn't work. Well, the partners get the advantage of not. Doesn't to work. That's pragmatic. Yep. Yeah. Abstract. He's abstracting the concept. Those women. I mean, you're making these vast generalizations. <laughs> the vast <laughs> generalizations. I'm a TE user. I may as well be like some ESTJ person. LOL. What gives you the right to make these comments? I'm a clinical psychologist. <laughs> like a PE critic, PE um, nemesis, nemesis kind of thing. Yeah, it's just like smash. <laughs> like, I'm a clinical psychologist. And need I remind you that you're a reporter who really has no actual opinion or background on what you're talking about. So I think the problem is not that I have a right to what to say. The problem is, is that you don't have the right to ask the question. <laughs> You've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. <laughs> I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men. I he, said it was a bad long-term solution. Bad is a long-term solution. Yes, yes. And it depends on the time frame. I mean, there can be, there's intense the pleasure in them. That is abstract. It all the time. But it's no formula for a long-term, successful long-term relationship. That's reciprocal, right? Any long-term relationship is reciprocal, virtually by definition. So Very let me put a quote fun. to you from the book, sure. where you say there are whole disciplines in universities forthrightly hostile towards men. These are the areas of study dominated by the postmodern stroke neo-Marxist claim that Western culture in particular is an oppressive structure created by white men to dominate and exclude women. But then I want to put minorities to you, too. Okay, minorities sure. Everyone. But I want to put to you that here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example, the gender pay gap stands at just over nine percent. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. You've got only seven women running the top FTSE one hundred companies. Yeah. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded, to quote your words back to you. It does seem that way. It does seem that way. Multi but, T.I. Yes. <laughs> Multivariable analysis of the pay gap shows that it doesn't exist. But that's just so not do, true, you. is it? That's I mean, that 9% pay gap, that's a gap between median hourly earnings yeah. between men and women. But that exists. Yeah, but there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not oh, the only causal. Yeah, yeah, that's informative. Salt. You never do a univariate analysis. Like yeah. you say, well, women... In aggregate, are paid less than men. Okay, well, then we break it down by age, we break it down by occupation, we break it down by interest, we break it down by personality. But you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top. That's what's skewing that gender pay gap, isn't it? You're saying, well, that's just a fact of not life. Saying women it aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top. I'm saying it. No, I'm not saying it matters either. You're saying, I'm it's saying a fact there are of multiple life. reasons for it. Yeah, but those reasons, why, why should women put up with those reasons? Why should, Why should women, women be content not to get I'm not, not saying that they should put up with it. I'm saying that the claim that the wage gap between men and women is only due to sex is wrong. And it is wrong. There's no yes. doubt about that. Yes. The varied analysis done. Well, so I, I can give you, you an you example. You keep on talking wait, about multivariate analysis. Let me no, give no, you no, an example. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. Yeah. Please, gap I have Effie inferior. I need to give you an example so I can get you to shut up. He's trying so <laughs> hard. <laughs> It's trying yeah. so hard. But do you agree that it's not fair? If you're a woman, not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid nine percent less than a man. That's not fair, is it? It's not fair. Let's it's see how you respond. It depends on why it's happening. It depends on why. I it's can happening. give you an example. I can give you an example. There's a personality trait known as agreeableness. Agreeableness. Agreeable people are passionate and polite. And agreeable people get paid less than dis than less agreeable people for the same job. Women are more agreeable than men. Again, a vast generalization. Some <laughs> women are not more agreeable than yes, men. Yes, that's true. But that's right. And some women get paid more than men. So you were saying that by and large, women are too agreeable to get the pay rises they I'm, deserve. No, I'm saying that that's <laughs> one component of a multivariate equation that predicts um, salary. 
It wow. accounts for maybe 5% of the variance, something like that. So surely so you the need about another 20, you need about another 18 factors, one of which is gender. And there is prejudice, there's no doubt about that, but it accounts for a much smaller proportion of the variance in the pay gap than the radical just, feminist just, 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 just informing, just informing. <laughs> Uh, All right. further into the video. Yeah, it's good. Or you're, uh, no. Like, uh, get to the punchline jab, and then we'll close out Jordan Peterson. All right. I'll go right to the end. Not at all. Your divisions between men and women, you're stirring people up. You know, you have you, any critics of you online get absolutely lambasted by your followers. Any critics? You and by me, them off, generally. <laughs> by me? <laughs> Sorry, your critics get lambasted by you. I mean, if isn't they're that academics, irresponsible? Not at all. If an academic <laughs> is going to come okay. after me and tell me that I'm not qualified and that I'm not, I don't know what I'm talking about. So like you're not going to say to your followers to now, quit the abuse, quit the anger. Well, we'd need some s substantial examples of the abuse and the anger before I could detail that question. There's a lot of it out so, there. For, well, let, let's take a more general perspective on that. So, so I've had 25,000 letters since June, something like that from people who told me that I brought them back from the brink of destruction. And so I'm perfectly oh, willing to put that. I love those letters. Other vague <laughs> accusations that my fault. Have you got them yourself? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to toot my horn that much on that one, Jab. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Followers are making the lives of people that I've targeted miserable. Jordan Peterson, thank you. My pleasure. Nice talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> Be inferior. All right, guys. He's obviously an INTP. See, like I told you so. He's an INTP. You know, like. All right. There you go. Let's crop it out and put it on the Patreon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My goodness. All right. All right. How many? Uh, all right. Forty-six minutes in this show. That was great. Um. So there you go. Uh. Oh, we got a uh, a super chat, Mr. Jab. Yeah. Uh, oh, ten dollars, twenty dollars. People should want to have to say what you do for the community is imperative to the success of everyone understanding people on a personal level. Keep doing what you do. I hope this can go towards a test. And that's a ten dollar donation and a twenty dollar donation. So that's thirty dollars total. Thank you, sir. Thank you very I will much. Actually, fun fact, I actually plan on learning UX design over the next few days. So oh, we just got owned by uh, Funny Bear 465 He gave a $10 super chat earlier. Neither of you acknowledged it. Well, I can't acknowledge it because I can't read what's on my own stream right now because the uh, the little uh, the letters are just uh, the color is like screwing with me. I got to get that fixed. So I apologize on that. Uh, and I don't know how far back it was. So if we did miss your super chat, I apologize. Uh, I don't know if we could yeah. try to find that. It's all good. It's all good. Um, sorry if we missed it. I was actually like running other videos on my screen. And, uh, even though people think I only have one screen, I actually only have two screens, but I would need a third. So if anyone wants to donate $200 for a new screen, uh, feel free to do it. Um, <clears throat> Just kidding. I'm not. My coin slot isn't. That coin slot isn't operational yet. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, honestly, I think the one we installed recently uh, is just not big enough for that. Uh, but uh, we'll get there, Jab. We'll get there. We'll get there pretty soon. Uh, you know, we'll just have to take I'm, it I'm to the shop. Right. I'm just waiting for some Dubai prince to come along, drop two thousand dollars on us, and be like, "Thank you, sir." Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you've moved on from uh, Nigerian princes. Excellent. Well. Uh, well, the Dubai princes are actually legit. Oh, okay. I I had no idea. I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind next time I check my email spam folder. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if there's a Dubai who says he's related to you, you know it's legit. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks. Yeah, we just just, just decided. You know, it's Friday night. You know, and uh, very late stars. So we'll just give the community two of them tonight. So why not? There you have it. Ben Shapiro, ISTJ, and uh, Jordan Peter. Uh, Dr. Jordan uh, B. Peterson is uh, INTP, uh, something that we kind of already knew and I keep trying to convince people of, but for some reason no one believes me and say he's like an ENTJ or something like that. No. Uh, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, any questions and whatnot, leave it in the comment section. We will uh, get that figured out. 
If you'd like to support us on this uh, channel, check out our Patreon. Link is in the description. At least it should be. And uh, also check out the podcast in case you like want to like drive to work on your commute and whatnot and actually listen to me like talk and stuff instead of having to watch YouTube and destroying your data while you're like going to work because like the podcast is a lot easier that way and like would not hurt your data plan. So check that out too. Uh, otherwise, uh, Jab and I will be back, uh, I believe, on Sunday for Q&A, depending on like my flight schedule, uh, and because uh, I'm flying to uh, the other side of the country uh, this weekend. So with that being said, uh, thank you all for coming. Have a good night, and uh, we'll see you then. Yeah, Jab a foot review. <laughs> see you later, guys. Later. Later, Gator. Never not have cheese bread.